STS-82 was the 22nd flight of the Space Shuttle Discovery and the 82nd mission of the Space Shuttle program. It was NASA's second mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope, during which Discovery's crew repaired and upgraded the telescope's scientific instruments, increasing its research capabilities and achieved the highest altitude ever attained by a STS orbiter, 335 nautical mile Discovery launched from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, on the 11th of February 1997, returning to Earth on the 21st of February 1997 at Kennedy Space Center. Topic: True. Topic: Spacewalks. Eva 1 Lee and Smith Start the 14th of February 1997 to 434 coordinated universal time End the 14th of February 1997 to 1116 coordinated universal time Duration 6 hours 42 minutes Eva 2 Harbaugh and Tanner Start the 15th of February 1997 to 325 coordinated universal time. End the 15th of February 1997 to 1052 coordinated universal time. Duration 7 hours 27 minutes. Eva 3 Lee and Smith. Start the 16th of February 1997 to 253 coordinated universal time. End the 16th of February 1997 to 1004 coordinated universal time. Duration 7 hours 11 minutes. Eva 4 Harbaugh and Tanner. Start the 17th of February 1997 to 3:45 Coordinated Universal Time. End the 17th of February 1997 to 10:19 Coordinated Universal Time. Duration: six hours, 34 minutes. Eva Five Lee and Smith. Start the 18th of February 1997 to 1315 coordinated universal time. End the 18th of February 1997 to 1832 coordinated universal time. Duration 5 hours 17 minutes. Topic: Mission objectives. The STS-82 mission was the second in a series of planned servicing missions to the orbiting Hubble Space Telescope HST, which had been placed in orbit on 24 April 1990 by Discovery during STS-31. The first servicing mission was done by Space Shuttle Endeavour on STS-61. Work performed by Discovery's crew significantly upgraded the scientific capabilities of the HST and helped to keep the telescope functioning smoothly until the next scheduled servicing missions, which were STS-103 in 1999 and STS-109 in 2002. On the third day of the mission, Discovery's seven-member crew conducted the first of four spacewalks, also called extravehicular activities or AVAs to remove two older instruments and install two new astronomy instruments, as well as perform other servicing tasks. The two older instruments being replaced were the Goddard High Resolution Spectrograph and the Faint Object Spectrograph, exchanged for the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph and the Near Infrared Camera and Multi Object Spectrometer, respectively. In addition to installing the new instruments, astronauts replace other existing hardware with upgrades and spares. Hubble received a refurbished fine guidance sensor, an optical device used to provide pointing information for the telescope and as a scientific instrument for astrometric science. The Solid State Recorder SSR replaced one of HST's reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. 
The SSR provides much more flexibility than a reel-to-reel -reel recorder and can store 10 times more data. One of Hubble's four reaction wheel assemblies RWA, part of the telescope's pointing control subsystem, was replaced with a refurbished spare. The RWAs use angular momentum to move and maintain the telescope in a desired position. The wheel axes are oriented so that the telescope can provide science with only three wheels operating, if required. Study of the returned mechanism provided a rare opportunity to study equipment that had undergone long-term service seven years in space, particularly for the effects of vacuum on lubricants which were found to be in excellent condition. Topic. Mission results STS-82 demonstrated anew the capability of the Space Shuttle to service orbiting spacecraft. Discovery's crew completed servicing and upgrading of the Hubble Space Telescope during four planned AVAs, later performing a fifth and scheduled spacewalk to repair insulation on the telescope, HST deployed in April 1990 during STS-31. It was designed to undergo periodic servicing and upgrading over its 15-year lifespan, with first servicing performed during STS-61 in December 1993. Holly, who originally deployed the telescope, operated the Orbiter Remote Manipulator System arm on STS-82 to retrieve HST for second servicing at 3.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 13 February, and positioned it above Discovery's payload bay less than half an hour later, relying on more than 150 tools and crew aids. Lee and Smith performed AVAs 1, 3 and 5, with Harbaugh and Tanner performing AVAs 2 and 4. EVA 1 began at 11.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 13 February, and lasted 6 hours, 42 minutes. One of Hubble's solar arrays was unexpectedly disturbed by a gust of air from Discovery's airlock when it was depressurized, but was not damaged. Ali and Smith removed two scientific instruments from Hubble, the Goddard High Resolution Spectrograph GHRS, and Faint Object Spectrograph FOSS, and replaced them with the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph STIS, and Near Infrared Camera and Multi-Object Spectrometer NICMOS, respectively. STIS expected to shed further light on supermassive black holes. NICMOS features more capable infrared detectors and gave astronomers their first clear view of the universe at near infrared wavelengths between 0.8 and 2.5 micrometers. EVA 2 began at 10:25 p.m. the 14th of February and lasted 7 hours 27 minutes. Harbaugh and Tanner replaced a degraded fine guidance sensor and a failed engineering and science tape recorder with new spares. Also installed was a new unit called the Optical Control Electronics Enhancement Kit, which further increased the capability of the fine guidance sensor. During this EVA astronauts noted cracking and wear on thermal insulation on the side of HST facing Sun and in the direction of travel. EVA 3 began at 9.53 p.m., 15 February, and lasted 7 hours, 11 minutes. Ali and Smith removed and replaced a data interface unit on Hubble, as well as a reel-to-reel -reel engineering and science tape recorder with a new digital solid-state recorder SSR that allowed simultaneous recording and playback of data. Also changed out was one of four reaction wheel assembly units that use spin momentum to move telescope toward a target and maintain it in a stable position. After this EVA, mission managers decided to add EVA 5 to repair the thermal insulation on HST. EVA 4 began at 10.45 p.m., 16 February, and lasted 6 hours, 34 minutes. Harbaugh and Tanner replaced a solar array drive electronics package which controls the positioning of Hubble's solar arrays. Also replaced covers over Hubble's magnetometers and placed thermal blankets of multilayer material over two areas of degraded insulation around the light shield portion of the telescope just below the top of the observatory. Meanwhile, inside Discovery Horowitz and Lee worked on the MIDIC to fabricate new insulation blankets for HST. 
Final spacewalk, EVA 5, lasted 5 hours, 17 minutes. Ali and Smith attached several thermal insulation blankets to three equipment compartments at the top of the support systems module section of the telescope which contain key data processing, electronics and scientific instrument telemetry packages. STS-82 EVA total of 33 hours, 11 minutes is about 2 hours shy of total EVA time recorded on first servicing mission. Discovery's maneuvering jets fired several times during mission to reboost telescope's orbit by 8 nautical miles. Hubble was redeployed on 19 February at 1.41 am, at the highest altitude both it, and STS orbiter ever reached, a 335 nautical mile by 321 nautical mile orbit. Initial checkout of new instruments and equipment during mission showed all were performing nominally. Calibration of the two new science instruments took place over a period of several weeks, with first images and data anticipated in about 8 to 10 weeks. <laughs> Wake-up calls NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, which was first used to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by their families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. Topic. Summary of instruments exchange Near-infrared camera and multi-object spectrometer NICMOS, replaces Goddard High Resolution Spectrograph GHRS. Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph STIS, replaced Faint Object Spectrograph FOSS. Topic. See also List of human spaceflights List of Space Shuttle missions Outline of Space Science <laughs>